Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today we're going to take a look at how to make a Bluetooth joystick. Now in my last video <coughs> I showed you the circuit minus the servo and joystick where we set up to Bluetooth communicate between two Arduino boards and I just simply had a switch on this one the master and it turns the LED on on the slave. And as you can see, there are no connections between the two boards. It's all wirelessly communication between the HCO5, which is the master, and the HCO6, which is the slave. Now, if you haven't seen that, you're probably going to want to go and watch that video first because I'm not going to go over all that. I'm just going to, in this video, go over how to add a joystick to control a servo. Because what I'm building this project for is a control for a robot that I'm making. Now the robot, I only need one servo, and that's for the steering. Now you could add other servos. Um, when we get to the sketch, I'll show you how you can do that. But for this one, I'm just using one servo, and I've got the joystick here. Now you can get joystick modules. I just had an old uh, PlayStation controller, or it was Xbox, one of the two. I got it out of a free box at a garage sale. And I just desoldered the joystick out of it because it's the same thing as those those boards that you buy on like eBay or Deals Extreme or Amazon. And I just desoldered it. And all it is is two potentiometers. And then there's also a push button on here too. And um, when I get the robot set up, I'll probably eliminate this push button and use this because I'm going to probably put like headlights on the robot. And I can use the push button to turn the lights off and on. But I'll demonstrate this working. See, as I move the joystick, the servo moves. Now I'm just using the right and left. And um, in my next video, I'm going to show you how you can add um, a control when we're gonna, for the motor. And uh, we're going to use a H-bridge for controlling the speed and direction of the DC motor that's going to be driving the robot. And that'll use the up and down function of the joystick. But for this video, we're just going to take a look at the right and left. All right, like I said, um, if you haven't watched the other video, um, you can finish watching this one. You'll probably want to watch the other one where it shows you how to get this set up and get started. All right, with that, I think we'll go over to the computer. And uh, we'll take a look at the sketch for the master board first, and then we'll take a look at the sketch for the slave board. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Okay, I have the Arduino IDE opened up here, and I've got the sketch for the first board, the, uh, the master board. And this will be the board, the Arduino board that has the joystick connected to it and the HCO5 master Bluetooth device. Now, um, <laughs> this sketch, along with the uh, one for the slave board, can all be found on the website. And um, <clears throat> I also have some links to where to get these parts if you don't already have them. And I also have a link on there too as well for the uh, last video I did on getting started with this. And then I'll also have a link to the video on how to connect your HCO5 or HCO6 up to your Arduino because we, use, we are using logic level converters instead of voltage dividers because, I mean, voltage dividers do work like I've stated in other videos I've done, but the logic level converter just works a lot better and I just, I swear by them. All right, so now all I've done is added a couple things to the sketch from the last video I did. And we just had the push button on there. And you can see I still got, there's the define, the button, and that's on pin three. And then we had our value. And um, that's just detecting whether the it's storing the value of if, if the button was pushed or if it's not pushed. And then what I've added is two more integers. Now we're only gonna be using the joy one, which stands for joystick one, because you got an X and Y axis. This here is going to be the Joy 2 is going to be used in the next video I'm doing. 
on adding a DC motor being controlled by an H bridge so you can control either it's forward or reverse and the speed. So for this tutorial just comment that one out and ignore joystick too. Alright then of course in our void setup we're starting our serial and make sure both your boards are running the same serial communication rate otherwise it won't work. Then of course we're setting the button as an input. Now we get down to the void loop and you can see this is actually a pretty short sketch. There's not a whole lot to it. And we have our, <coughs> our we're checking the val and digital reading the button. And it's checking if the button is high which means it's pushed and then it's serial writing a number of 200. Now I used 100 in the last video and I changed that to 200 because we're sending a value from the joystick that's going to include the number 100 in it. So 200 was above that range. And then I have a delay here to debounce it. When I actually hook this up to my robot, I'm probably going to get rid of this delay and I'll add a, a hardware um, to debounce the button instead of doing it in software. And then of course here we've got our joystick one and it's being read so we're analog reading A2 and it's setting that value to Joy1. Then it's mapping that value and I use my serial monitor and that's why I have this here it's for testing it. Just comment the serial right out and then uncomment this and check to make sure but most of your joysticks should have the reading between 0 and 1023. So I just map that to a value of 5 to 175. Now your servo can go from position 0 to 180. I do not like running them to their maximums. So that's why I have it from 5 to 175. That's up to you. You can put 0 and 180 in there. But uh, I just don't like to run mine to the maximums. And then what we're doing is we're serial writing the joystick 1. And what that's doing is it's sending it to the other Arduino board that has the HCL6 connected to it. And then I just put a delay of 100 in here. Again, once I set this up with the robot, I'll probably put this down to like a 10. You want just a very, very small delay in there. It just helps things run smoother. Then, um, you know, you're not overloading the Bluetooth device, sending tons and tons of data I mean, it probably would handle it, but I like to put just a little bit of delay in there to keep things running smoothly. All right, well, that's it for the sketch on uh, the first one for the master. Drag in here the sketch for our slave board, and this is the board that will have the servo on it. So as you can see, we've included the servo.h library. Then we're naming the servo, and instead of using the my servo, I don't like that. It's I like to just put S1 for servo 1, S2 for servo 2. And um, it just makes it easier when you're writing the sketch. You don't have to type in, you know, my servo. You can just type S1. And then, of course, we have their LED on pen 2. And then we have the position. And what this is just keeping track of if the LED is on or off. So it knows to turn it on or off when it receives the value of 200 coming in. And of course we got our int which is val and that's just serial scanning whatever number we've sent to the Arduino board. Now the void setup here of course we got our serial begin and we're running 9600 of course because that's what our master board is running as well. Then we're attaching our servo and I have mine on pin 3 you can put it on any digital pen. Just make sure whichever pen you put it on is, or it has to be a pulse width modulation pen, excuse me. So whatever pen you put it on on your Arduino board, just put that pen number in here, but make sure it's a PWM pen. Now I'm using Nano, but you can use any Arduino board. You can use Uno, Mega, whatever you want. This sketch is going to work with all of them. All right, next we're setting our pin mode for the LED as an output, of course. Now we get down to the sketch and we get into our if statements. So first of all, it checks to see if serial is available. 
If it's not, it just skips all this and comes back and checks. It pretty much just waits until serial info is available. So then it goes through and first it checks, or excuse me, first if it is available, it goes ahead and puts that information into the integer val. Then it checks if val equals 200 and position equals zero, it digitally writes the LED high and then changes the position to one. Then we have an else if value is 200 and position is 1, which means the LED is already turned on. What it's doing then is it's digital writing LED low, turning it off, and then of course putting it to position 0, so it knows next time we push the button, okay, it's off now, now we turn it on. Then we have our else if the value is greater than or equal to 0, and value is, oh, excuse me, value is less than or equal to 175, then it takes whatever number it's received and serial writes it to, or excuse me, it writes it to the servo. Now you can add more servos, and what you do, and uh, let me back up here to the other sketch, what you do is add another joystick, and that's what I got here, or if you had a button, whatever you're going to use to control it. And um, then that's why if you wanted to use a joystick on Joy 2, just copy all this and paste it down here and then change that to 2, 2. The only big difference is, is after you map it, you want to do another value and add like 200 to it. Because if you're sending the same value as joystick 1, it's just going to put that to joystick one, or sir, uh, excuse me, put it to servo one on the uh, the slave board. So if you added another one, just add two hundred. Then of course you'd have to change the uh, the button value, but you could put that at like a thousand. You'd be fine there. And then over in your sketch for the slave board, you'd have another else if, and you'd want to check, you know, if it's greater or equal to or greater than 200 and less than what would that be 375 i think if my math is right and if so then you just do another little statement before writing it and you'd minus 200 from that value and then write it to your servo that's how you can add more servos pretty easy ain't it <laughs> hopefully this all made sense to you um i mean this this isn't too complicated this this is like advanced beginner stuff. Um, it's definitely not advanced, advanced Arduino stuff, but uh, this isn't something you'd want to try for your first couple of projects. If you're just getting started in Arduino, try you know a couple simple ones first, and then this would be a good one to move on to. And um, like I've, I've said, this there's lots of different applications. You didn't just have to use this for a robot. You could use this for controlling rotating a security camera, all kinds of different things. It's just the project I'm putting together and doing the tutorials on, I'm building this for a robot that I'm making out of a um, RC truck that I found in a free box at a garage sale. And I get lots of free stuff at garage sales. So if there's electronics in the free box, whether they work or not, I usually take them because I can scavenge components like the joystick I scavenged that out of a free box. I've got this RC truck that it didn't have the remote control for it anymore. And I tested the motor worked. Um, the steering just used a DC motor. It was all the, either all the way to the right or all the way to the left. And I've removed that and I'm working on adding the servo so I can get a little more sensitivity to the steering. But after uh, my next video here that will be dealing with adding the DC motor control for forward and reverse and the speed. Then I'll probably do a final video showing the whole project put together and being used. Okay, um, well with that, I don't think there's really anything else to go over. And just a reminder, all this information can be found on the website. Uh, just look in the description below and you'll find a link and you can get both these sketches off of there. And, I'll have links to the previous video I did on starting, getting started with this. And I'll have some links on there too if any of these parts, if you don't have them, where to get them. 
And I probably, after I get done with the robot, my final video on putting the robot together, I'll probably do a video because I got a couple more controllers I've gotten out of free boxes. And I'll probably do a video showing how to get those out of there to reuse. Because um, there's nothing better than free parts for your Arduino projects. <laughs> Saves money to spend on uh, the more important things. All right, well, with that, I would like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. If you found this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. So I hope you have a great day, and remember, have fun building. 